Okay, so when we're talking about 3D elements, we're mostly talking about TET elements and hex elements. Uh, now, HyperMesh has a variety of different tools that allow you to generate hex elements. Uh, the mo one that's most commonly used and the most popular one is uh, solid mapping. Uh, now, in solid mapping, we'd have to grab a geometry like this and split it off into uh, mappable parts and mappable pieces where we could go ahead and uh, map the mesh through each individual part. Uh, now, in order to be able to do that, we have a, uh, a lot of geometry capabilities where we can edit the, the actual solid and trim the solid into these mappable parts. Now, if we go to the solid edit button here, we can see the different methods that we have in order to be able to generate the, the different solid parts here. Now, uh, one of the methods that we use are, for example, trimming with lines, trimming with surfaces. We can merge different solids together. We can detach them, and we can even do some Boolean operations as well. Now, for this, I can go ahead and start by uh, separating these ribs from the base here, for example. So I can go ahead and select the solid that I want. Then I select the surface where I want to trim the whole, the whole part by. So then once I go ahead and separate that, you can see how the part is now treated separately by the two different solids that I have here. Now, a better way to see if uh, everything was done correctly is we can go ahead and check by using our topology view. Now, when we look at our topology view, we can see how we have these yellow partitions, which uh, specify a shared edge or a shared face between the two different solids. And we can see how the top solid here highlighted in white is separated from the bottom one here highlighted in white and not. So now what we'd like to do here is we'd ideally want to separate this into what we call mappable solids. Now there's some rules that go into what what is considered a mappable solid. Now the best way to know whether our solid is mappable or not is by changing our view to our mappable view. Now when we change this to our mappable view, we can see that the bottom portion is simple enough to where the software can mesh that part, but the top ribs here are a bit more complicated, which means that it cannot go ahead and mesh each individual part. So we have to do some more simplification, whether it's through defeaturing or separating of the solid in order to be able to generate a mappable solid. So in this case, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'll separate each one of these particular ribs. Uh, I'll separate those from the top and the bottom rib here, and I'll just kind of create those individual solids. Now. The part that I can go ahead and start off with here is I can start off with, for example, these, this rib here. Now, one way that I can go ahead and cut through here is by using trimming with lines, where I can grab a solid and I can s specify a line. So in case, in this case, this line, and then I specify a direction where I want to cut it through. So I'll go ahead and say from here to here, and it'll go ahead and trim in that particular direction using this line. So we'll go ahead and click trim you'll see how it separates these bottom parts by this top part here. Now, normally when you trim with a single line, it'll infinitely cut through the geometry here. But we have some, uh, we can go ahead and continue and re-merge those uh, later on since we have all of the merging tools as well. So I'll go ahead and separate each rib. It looks like this one here is already separated. So I was able to cut those two together. Now up here, I would need to separate from this particular line here so I'll just go ahead and select that solid. I'll select this line here. And again, I'll just specify a direction using these two points. So I'll go ahead and click Trim. You'll see that I went ahead and trimmed that. Now I'll go ahead and do the same for this one here. And I could just repeat this process through the rest of these ribs here. And that one seems to be separated already. Now, with these other solids that got separated that we didn't intend to, we can just go ahead and merge those. So I click Merge on solids that I select. Looks like those are all of the ones that I want to merge together. So I'll click Merge, and that'll go ahead and join them again. Now here, you can see how these got split up from here. So I can just go ahead and select those two solids there merge and then I can select this one and merge it to that. I just need one more. Now you can see that these this top part is now clear 
and this bottom part is clear as well. So those are now mappable parts. Now these blue ones, I need to go ahead and simplify a little further. So another way that I can do that is it looks like all of these bottom ones line up to this particular line here. So what I can go ahead and do is I can select this solid and trim it with a line. So if I, again, I use this tool here. I select the solid. I select the line that I want to cut with. And I just specify a direction using these two points. So from here to here, that would specify a vector in that direction. And it will infinitely cut in that direction. So if I click trim, it'll go ahead and trim through all of the different parts here. And you can see how most of the part is now mappable. So now we can go about mapping each one of these individual parts. So the last section that I would need to separate would be this bottom section here. So now for this bottom section, we can see how there is one part that doesn't quite line up with the other ones, and that's why it's not mappable. So I can just kind of separate this section here to make the rest of it mappable and then handle this particular section on its own. So the way I can do that is I select this solid, I select this line, and then I specify that I wanted to go in this direction here. So going from top to bottom there. So I'll go ahead and trim that. You'll see that the rest of this part is now mappable, but now I just need to map this particular portion here. Now for this, I can easily just trim it with the bounding lines. And what trimming with bounding lines does is it allows me to select all of the lines bounding a specific feature, and I can just separate it by that particular feature. So I can go ahead and select all of the bounding lines here, click Trim, and you'll see that that'll go ahead and separate it, and now both of these parts are mappable. And since our entire solid here is now mappable, I can go ahead and mesh this now. So now, I can go ahead and start using the 3D meshing tools. Now, now that the whole part is mappable, I don't have to worry so much about whether the meshes will line up or not because the software will automatically start matching all of the different uh, solids together. So if I go down to 3D and solid map tools, uh, the easiest way to go about this is just to select all of the unmeshed solids here, specify an element size, and then click mesh. And once I click Mesh, what this will do is it'll go ahead and show me a sort of preview of what mesh is going to be generated. Now, here I could kind of see the mesh that's going to be generated as the, as the source. And once it generates that as the source, then it'll go ahead and map that particular mesh through the solid. Now, if we look closely to some of these uh, parts here, you can see how this number six, which would be the sixth part to get meshed, uh, it will use this mesh and it will go in this direction. So it'll sort of map it through this direction here. Now, if we look at this number 10 here, you'll see how it'll generate a mesh on the top and it'll run it through the bottom of, of, the, of the solid part here. And it kind of goes in order as well, where it'll mesh the six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10. And it'll go about the entire model just meshing each individual component. Now, this also has the ability to adjust a particular edge if you wanted to change the number of elements or if you wanted to remesh a particular face, then you can also do that as well. So I can just go ahead and click Mesh now. And this will go ahead and start meshing each individual component. Now, depending on the element size that you choose, that's how long each particular part will take. Now, here you can see how it's going through each individual solid, and it's going ahead and meshing each individual part as well. Now, since all of the elements or all of the uh, different parts here have been meshed, now you can see and check each individual element and check the quality of your elements as well. Um, now, another particular way that I wanted to show you guys how to actually mesh the geometry here is we can have a little more control over this if we wanted to just kind of reject the mesh that we generated. 
and then we can just kind of look at how we can mesh it each individual part if you wanted to as well. So you can choose each particular solid and mesh them individually if you want to have a little more control over it. And if you wanted to mesh them, in like for example, in different uh, element sizes, uh, that kind of thing as well. So that's another way that you can just have a little more control. Uh, if you want to specify, for example, which is going to be your source, which is going to be your destination phase, you can manually uh, give it a hint at that, and it'll get, get a better idea as to the direction that you would want to map the particular solid. So now, in this case here, what I'd like to do now is I'll go ahead and select this solid here, which is the most intricate part here, and I'll mask everything else around it. Now I'll go ahead and hide those elements and I'll focus on this part here. Now when we're looking at this part, another method that we have in order to have a little more control over the mesh that's being generated is we can generate a 2D mesh using the 2D mesh auto, auto mesh panel. And we can go ahead and select the mesh that we want to, or the face that we want to mesh. We can just click mesh and you'll see that it'll generate a 2D mesh. Now once we generate this 2D mesh, We'll go ahead and show the elements again. You'll see that the mesher will automatically know that this is the type of mesh that you want to create, and it'll use that mesh as the reference, as the source phase, and ma map that through the actual solid itself. So we can go ahead and try to make a clean mesh with this and manipulate the, the edges so that we can have as high quality elements as possible. So I can go ahead and select that, and I can ma manipulate the number of elements on each edge and spend some time doing this. That way you would have higher quality elements. You can click on each edge that's created, or you can even create your own edges to have a little more control over this. So for example, one of the most useful ways of creating an edge is by creating a washer around these holes. So here we can see how we have some poor quality elements that are in a hole, which usually has a high concentration of stress. So in order to capture the geometry around the hole and have higher quality elements around there, we can actually generate what we call a washer. So if I go to the quick edit panel and I select this option washer here, I can just set an offset value and I can click on the edges of the washer here. And you can see how it creates this edge that we can then use to generate a better mesh around that hole. So now if I select these elements, I can, for example, set these to five, and you can see how it creates a much cleaner edge around the hole here, or a much cleaner mesh around the hole here. And I have a lot more control over this. Now, to demonstrate how this mesh would be generated, so here we have another surface that we need to mesh. Um, we can see how we can map this now. And if I go to 3D solid map, I can then use the one volume option to go ahead and map this mesh. And if I click mesh, you'll see how it maps the solid or maps the mesh through the solid and it'll go ahead and generate that washer through the mesh as well. So it'll use this mesh that I, that, that I generated and it'll use that as a reference to map through the geometry here. And that's how you can map the entire, or you can mesh the entire model.